Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is C++ from Scratch. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about abstract classes. So in the last few videos, we've been looking at the basics of inheritance and polymorphism. So we would do things like create some base class and then multiple derived classes that inherit from this base class. Now, there are times when we're doing this where our base class represents some abstract concept. So maybe it represents something like animal, right? And we have these derived classes like dog and cat. Now, in situations like this, we never really want an instance of our base class type. So we never want an object of type animal here. Animal just represents this abstract concept. Now, one way that we have to prevent users from creating objects of this type, right, that's an abstract concept, is by declaring our, say, base class to be what we call an abstract class. So if we go ahead and look at the right-hand side of the screen here, I have the CPP reference page for abstract classes up. And you can see that it says that our abstract class defines an abstract type that cannot be instantiated, but it can be used as a base class. So defining something as an abstract type just means you know, programmers won't be able to either purposely or accidentally create an object of this you know, abstract type, um, but it can still be used as um, you know, something that we can inherit from and build on top of. Now, the way that we do this is through pure virtual functions. So, you know, a, a class or struct will be an abstract class if it contains at least one of these pure virtual functions. And it's really just a virtual function that instead of implementing, we do this assignment equal to zero. It's just a way of saying that, you know, this struct or class is not going to implement this member function and some derived class, you know, needs to implement it in order for this not to be an abstract class anymore. So you can see down here, it says an abstract class defines or inherits at least one function for which the final overrider is pure virtual. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at an example of creating, say, an abstract class. So we can go ahead and open up this abstract class.cpp. And inside of here, uh, we've got our code from last time when we were looking at virtual functions. So we have uh, a few simple structs to find. So some base class or base struct called animal that has a single virtual function uh, called speak. And then we have two derived classes, dog and cat, that both um, they both uh, inherit from this base class animal. And they both override the speak method. So dog speak method says woof, and cat speak method uh, says meow. Now inside of our main function down here, core of our C++ programs, we create you know, instances of our dog and our cat uh, structs. So we create these objects and we call speak for both of them. So we should see a printout of woof followed by meow. Then what we do is we create a reference to our base class type of our objects dog and cat, so A1 and A2 here. And what we saw last time was that if we still call these speak methods, that even though that we had these references to our base class type, because we were using our virtual function here, or we had a virtual function that we were overriding inside of our derived classes, we would get the speak from our derived classes here. So for example, when we called A1 speak, we would get woof and A2 speak, we would get meow. So let's go ahead and save this and we can go ahead and you know, quickly compile this abstract class.cpp and uh, call the output executable just something like abstract class just to you know, give us a good foundation where we were last time. So we see woof and meow when we directly call um, those member functions um, for our uh, objects of type dog and cat respectively. And then even if we upcast those objects to our base class type, we would still get the correct behavior here, right? Because we were using a virtual function. Now, in this case, right, with this you know simple hierarchy where we have a base class of animal and these derived classes, our animal is really this abstract type here, right? It's this abstract concept that we never really want to instantiate uh, an object for. So we never really want to create some general animal down here. So we never want to write, say, some animal a, right, and call a dot speak. This is something that you know we're perfectly allowed to do here, right, with the way that we've written things so far, but this really doesn't make a lot of sense. And in fact, we want to prevent, say, um, you know, software engineers from being able to do this in the first place, right? Because animal is this abstract concept, and we really only care about these derived classes. And the way that we can do that is by declaring some pure virtual function inside of animal. Now, a good candidate for that is our speak method here. 
So there is no kind of general, you know, speak or thing that all animals will say. So it makes sense to implement this as a pure virtual function. So every animal will have to implement their own speak method, right? So dog, say, implements woof, cat implements meow. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we can do is, you know, we'll get rid of, um, you know, the body of this function here. And then what we can do is just set this uh, virtual function equal to zero. And this declares it to be purely virtual, right? Uh, like the syntax says up here. So now that this is purely virtual, we're no longer allowed to create instances of this type animal anymore, but we can still inherit from it. So if I go down into my main function, I'm no longer allowed to do something like animal A, right? I'm no longer create an instance of this type. So if I try to compile this, so we'll recompile abstract class.cpp, you can see that we get an error. So cannot declare variable A to be of abstract type animal. And it says that uh, we can't do this because of the following virtual functions are pure within animal. So it shows us that our animal speak uh, member function here, this is a pure virtual function, right? So it prevents us to cr uh, from creating instances of this class or struct type. Okay, so let's go back in here and let's go ahead and get rid of this uh, creation of an, an object of type animal. And we just have the exact same code as we did in the previous video, right? We're still just creating a dog and cat, and then we're upcasting them to our base class type here. So we can still do this upcasting even though um, you know, this is a, an abstract class, right? The only thing that's really changed is that we cre can't create instances um, or objects of this class or struct type here, but we can still do this upcasting. Okay, so we'll go ahead and save this and we'll recompile. And you can see that we get our, the exact same output as we did last time. So we got woof and meow for our dog and our cat objects, and then woof and meow from our dog and our cat objects that were upcasted to our base class type. Okay, so that's a little bit about the idea behind uh, these abstract classes, sometimes called abstract base classes. So it's a way that we have of preventing um, programmers from creating instances of this base class type that represents, say, some abstract concept. Now. Below the video, I'll go ahead and include uh, a link to this uh, CPP reference page. And as always, you can find uh, any of these examples at github.com slash coffee before arch. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.